Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 391 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise. We are back after an extended summer break, and I thought I would share with you two vintage finds that I made while on holiday. They have not been opened. I am very, very nervous to be sharing them with you here because I hope they're going to be in good condition. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. If you'd like to find out how you can support my work, um, you should be able to see a link to my coffee page in the video description below. And if you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up because that hurts. <sighs> You can tell I haven't done this for a while because that helps with the YouTube algorithm and means more people have the video flagged up for them, which means more people get to watch it. Okay, first comment for this one goes to Rich Mitch, appropriately enough, who says, hello, Scent Genie here is here as well. Stephanie says, excited for this one. Maudlin says, fingers crossed they're in mint condition. Yes, I really hope so as well. Um, Gavin says, that's the good Diorella. Now, some of you will be aware, will know the story behind this Diorella. So where were these found? These were found in, were these in the same shop? Yes, they, these were in the same perfume shop in the town of Monreale, uh, which is just a little bit out of Palermo on the island of Sicily. If you've never been to Sicily, you need to go. It is really, really quite spectacular and quite magical. Um, and I went to this perfumery uh, one time and I saw I saw the Diorella and I saw the Hire and something possessed me to buy the, the Hire first. I think it's because I've, I've got a vintage Diorella Extra. I actually think that current Diorella isn't in too bad condition. And, and Hire is one that we've talked about on this channel lots and lots of times. Um, I, I, I know that it's considered to be amongst the worst dual scents ever made and ever released, but I always had a soft spot for Hire. Um, and and I, I wore it lots and lots and lots. And, and Hire hasn't actually been discontinued. You can still buy Hire uh, in, in I, I saw it in several shops in France, and Hire Energy, which I never really much liked, is quite easy to find. But this is, this is uh, a Hire that, if I show you, will you be able to see that? It just, no, you're not going to be able to see that, are you? No, the ingredients are just alcohol, water, and fragrance. And also the fact that this is the so-called Black Limited Edition immediately places it as a 2002 release because Hire came out in 2001. This Limited Edition was 2002. So I know that this bottle is at least 20 years old. Higher, I've spoken about a lot in relation to uh, Hermes H24. I always liked the fact that Higher managed to kind of do orchard fruit in a very kind of colony masculine sort of way. Um, and Durella, you all know about anyway. And this is, I, I haven't been able to, so yes, where was I going with the story? So I bought the Higher because I was really, really curious about the Higher. And then we got back to where we were staying. And then it suddenly hit me, I thought, there was a vintage Durella there and I and I didn't get it and I didn't want to you know spend money on two perfumes and everything but it kept bugging me and kept bugging me and I thought that was that was a vintage Durella and I just I just you know I I didn't get it so then I did this I did a sort of woe is me post on the community tab on YouTube and I think pretty much most of you said that I should go back and get it so the long-suffering Madame Persilaise um, agreed to go back to Monreale, not that it was all that far away from where we were staying, and I went in and I and I got the Diorella. But because it was all of you who encouraged me to get it, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to share it with you. I'm, I haven't I haven't opened it. Um, what are people saying? Rich Mitch says, when Dior have a four-digit batch code, the first number is the year it was made. Yes, I looked online at, at all of that kind of stuff. So it's got... Um, it's it's got it's got the e symbol there but it it doesn't have the the recycling symbol the batch code is i just need to get the, the batch code is actually a five digit batch code i think but but it's also got one of those weird amounts right it's 112 mils i i'm i decided that maybe it was like late 80s um 
early 90s maybe well no maybe maybe even maybe even not as old as that that looks like a splash bottle says felix yes it, it doesn't actually say vaporizateur or anything like that um so i i, I think it is going to be a splash um I, I I think we should get going, really. Okay, so I'm not going to give you tons and tons of history lesson type stuff about these sets. I just want to smell them. I just want to see what condition they're in. I just want to see if they immediately take me back down memory lane. Now, higher. I didn't just wear higher, but I used the shower gel. I wore the deodorant. Um, I really couldn't understand why it was discontinued. Oh, okay. Ooh. I don't think I ever had the black one. There we go. And maybe, maybe I'm going to hate it. Maybe I'm going to smell it and think, oh my goodness, what on earth was... Now, how old would I have been roughly when it came out? Uh, yeah, so like mid-twenties-ish, I suppose. Yeah, something like that. Oh, Rachel, that's very, very sweet. You don't need to do that, but that's very kind. Please do something nice for Mrs. P to say thank you for going back to Durella. Mr. Rachel is also long-suffering. Um, yeah, uh, well, I hope I kind of did. <laughs> but... Yes, you're right. Um, oh, let's let's pop that on here. Oh, this is really, really nerve-wracking. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Is the spray mechanism even going to work? So, not been sprayed for decades. Oh, gosh, that takes me back. To... <laughs> I, I still really like I still really, really like this. Or is it just because it's nostalgic now? I mean, okay, I suppose I can see why people were disdainful about it. Because, you know, what? what let's put it in the context of the other Dior scents. What had we had? We hadn't yet had Dior Homme, had we? This was the precursor to Dior Homme. Wasn't, wasn't, this, uh, wasn't this the first Dior Hedy Sliman release? But what Masculine said we had? We'd had Fahrenheit... And then we must have had Dune for men. And am I right that then this came along? I don't think there was anything between, I should have checked this out beforehand, but one of you will correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we would have had anything between Dune for men and this, maybe some kind of variant of, of Eau Sauvage. By the way, I was really, really surprised to see Eau Sauvage Extreme available very, very readily and easily all over Italy and in lots of places in, in France. I mean, we have Eau Sauvage and we have Eau Sauvage Parfum, but I don't think we get Extreme in the UK, unless I'm mistaken. And I smelt it, and I actually thought it was all right. I was quite tempted to buy myself a bottle, but but I didn't. Um, I can see why people decided to be disdainful about this, because it is it it, it, it is quite sharp. Um, and... <laughs> And I guess it it's it moved away so heavily from those slightly more butch masculines. Um, you know, it it doesn't have the woods, it doesn't have the balsams and the resins resin so overtly. It is just really, really quite strikingly synthetic orchard fruit and citrus fruit. But maybe that's why I liked it. I think I think I always saw something quite futuristic about it. And this is quite a futuristic sort of bottle. I remember the advertising campaign had a very, very, very kind of almost gaunt looking male figure, didn't it? That, you know, was almost on the verge of looking like a kind of android or a, or a robot. And there was something just a bit androgynous about him as well. Um, maybe it was a bit too sci-fi. And, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why I like H24, which now smelling this, I'm thinking absolutely H24 is related to this. Um, Ilya says it was all about that early 2000 urban trend, which translated into clean and minimalistic into scent. But it doesn't come across as that minimalistic, doesn't it? It's it's kind of like really in your face clean. Is it is it Dior doing L'Odyssee? Um, is it Dior doing... CK1, I don't know, you can you can feel that kind of vibe in there, absolutely. Um, I should say that it was composed by Olivier Girotin and Olivier Pecheur, the latter passed away, uh, sadly, very, very recently, and I didn't I didn't do a kind of tribute uh, to him, it, the time ran away and I wasn't able to do it, um, but I think this is one of the best things he's given us. Um, Rachel says, interesting connection to H24, now I want to smell it, lots of dihydromersinol, question mark. Um, Probably, but not, you know, this doesn't make me think Dracar Noir. Um, what are the official notes? Citrus, pear, basil, peach. 
okay? Rosemary, spices, cypress, um, musk, and pear tree wood. So it, it's that pear and apple thing that I think makes you think of page 24. Oh, I'm so pleased. That one is actually in perfect condition. Um, but I suppose that one was more likely to be in perfect condition because it's a spray. With the splashes, it's always a slightly different story. Oh, please be good, Durella. I really, really want you to be good, Durella. Okay, right, here we go. This one is going to go straight onto skin, I think. And then I will leave you in peace because I've taken up far too much of your time today. The dry down is magnificent, says Eco Jock. Well, I look forward to re-smelling the dry down again after all these years. Um, let's see. Yeah. Ooh, that does look good, doesn't it? That does look very, very good. Okay, here we go, folks. This is the one you made me buy. <laughs> now, I did... I did in the previous video, I put a little bit of poivre on there, didn't I? So let's go here. I, I, I found some vintage stuff in Italy last year as well, didn't I? I found the Chanel, I found the Chanel number five in the Paris. Okay. Oh, wow. No, that's in good condition. Oh, gosh. Okay, did I a few minutes ago say that I quite like current Durello? <laughs> oh my word. Okay, that's aged very, very well. So whatever they were doing in that tiny little shop in Monreale, um, they were looking after these things. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> Gavin says, take back the modern version is still the same. I like, I like wearing the modern version. I absolutely enjoy wearing the modern version, and Madame Perselais really likes it on me. But the modern version, in comparison to this, is much more about the top. It's much more about those sort of citrus going into cologne. For those of you who aren't aware, uh, Diorella is is in many ways very, very similar to Eau Sauvage. Some people consider it to be the perfected Eau Sauvage. So it's got that massive jasmine, hedione note in it, beautiful herbs, woods, but it's also got that kind of real uh, typical, stereotypical, not stereotypical, characteristic Edmund Rudnitzka inflection of the plum notes and the sheep uh, aspects that, so it, it kind of makes it a more sort of substantial Eau Sauvage. Um, and yes, Felix says, current Diorella is lacking the rotten fruit salad. Yeah, because I guess in the current one, we can't use the mosses as much as we need to. This is, this is really, really, oh, okay, I'm so so glad I got this. Um, uh, Gavin says the modern version is a citrus tea scent. This is jasmine fruit lime. Yes, yes, you're right. There is that kind of citrus tea translucent aspect to it, which is beautifully done and a, a real, real joy to wear. I love wearing it. But this is a proper sheep proper, proper citrus sheep, which is now currently also making me think of Clarence's um, Eau de Namizade. And Gavin says, I have finally made my point about Diorella not being what it was. We need to do a side-by-side -side one time soon, don't we? Um, phew. Oh, wow. I feel like I should just press stop now and just give myself a moment with the Durella. That is that, I think this may have to be stored in the fridge. It's just in perfect condition. Um, and and I and I really like what Hire is doing as well. I remember this now, sort of kind of going into that kind of cedary, woody base. Hire had brains. I thought Hire had brains. I have five bottles of vintage Durella, says Rachel, for this reason. I'll treasure every single one. Is it better than vintage Durissimo, though, says Woozy? No, 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 no. Durissimo for me is the holy grail, but it is very, very difficult to find Durissimos that are in top-notch condition. Um, and I think if you can find the Parfum or the Esprit de Parfum, those are the best ones to go for. There are some uh, vintages out there that have just got the most, most, most heartbreaking balance between um, the civet notes and the florals. Nothing is better than vintage Durissimo, says Rachel. I am so glad you agree. Right. 
that was a successful purchase, wasn't it? That makes the holiday even better than it already was. Okay, thank you very much for making the resumption of a love at first scent such a wonderful experience. I will try to do as many videos as possible between... Um, EcoJock says, will you share the higher source? Oh, sorry. The, the, it, well, it, it, there, are, there are two perfumeries in the town of Monreale. As I say, it's just a very, very short distance from Palermo. If you go to Monreale, you have to see the cathedral. That is why we went there. The beautiful, beautiful uh, mosaics in the cathedral. And as you stroll around the town, you will very, very easily see that there are two independent-ish perfumeries um, and... No, they were from different shops, actually. Now I remember. And they're not a very they're not very far away from each other. I seem to remember that one I think was called Angela. You'll find them very, very easily. They didn't have a huge amount of vintage stuff. I was tempted by an original bottle of Chanel number no. five au premier, but that was pretty pricey. And I still have quite a few drops of original number no. five au premier. Um, but I'm glad I got these. So yes, if 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 you ever find yourself in Sicily, go to Monreale but I've got the Durello already. Right, I need to go. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned to social media for details of new videos coming your way soon. And be good. Take care. Bye now.